Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. This is your host, ID Jester, and we are going to look at the brand new release called Star Drive 2. Star Drive 2 is made by a very small development team called Zero Sum Games. And basically, this is, in my opinion, one of the best 4X space strategy games out there. I love Star Drive 1. I did a whole Let's Play on that game, and um, it was quite a long epi uh, episode. I think it was about 15 or 20 episodes in total. Um, it was a heck of a comeback on our part. We almost got wiped out at one point, and we were able to come back and win that. In fact, one episode was so great. This game, um, I spent the entire episode just talking and showing uh, all the different ways to build your ships. We're going to look at that again, and just some of the really interesting things that Star Drive 2 is now added to the genre here. Again, this is uh, just a very small development team, basically uh, one guy and a couple helpers, I believe, is the company. Um, and they have done a wonderful, wonderful job. I love Star Drive. I'm just so happy to see Star Drive 2 as soon as I saw it on there. On Steam, I picked it up. Uh, you can pick it up currently at $30. If you own Star Drive 1, they're actually giving you 33% off, so basically $20 you can pick up Star Drive 2. It's a great value for your money. I'm so happy the developers out there decided to go ahead and do Star Drive 2. Um, I haven't actually played it. This is probably only the second or third time I've loaded it up. I was doing a few adjustments here in the options and stuff and just testing my recordings, but I have not actually done much with it yet. But we're going to get into that very shortly here. So why do I love Star Drive so much, the series? Well, uh, because it's a small development team, um, you can kind of run into issues in most uh, games with small development teams, not being able to you know, incorporate everything they want to um, and not uh, having the time and resources to put into the game but for some reason or somehow the wonderful gentleman that created star drive really spent a lot of effort and time and really nurtured it along did a great job uh, just incorporating a whole bunch of really great things make the races really interesting uh, but there was still a little bit missing from it and i think now with star drive 2 uh, with the additions to it it's going to make it a little more um, complete, I guess is the best way to put it. And I'm so glad that they uh, spent the time uh, to create Star Drive 2. Uh, it is a 4X outer space strategy simulation, I guess is the best way to put it. And I think it's the best, uh, best recommendation would be it's a successor to Master of Orion series which I totally loved back in the day, Master of Orion. I'm, you know I'm a big space 4X strategy guy. I've got plenty of different LPs on my channel. Um, Star Drive probably is one of my favorite games. And I've probably had the most um, replies from you guys out there about the game and the series as we progressed along. Just talking about how much you enjoyed the series and how the game looked really interesting, so hopefully um, I can inspire some of you out there to go ahead and look at Star Drive 2 and uh, decide for yourself if it's something you might want to get. Like I said, you can pick it up currently on Steam for $30. If you do own Star Drive 1, which I highly recommend, um, you can pick this up for $20. Currently, it's 33% uh, off if you own Star Drive, so of course I immediately snagged this up um, as soon as I could there. So, uh, what is great about Star Drive? Um, that's a really good question. What makes it really good? Well, first things first, it's a turn-based game. And I know some of you out there are probably thinking, oh, geez, turn-based games, that's, you know, I don't know. It's kind of different being turn-based. I love turn-based games for... 4X games, uh, just like Civilization or Beyond Earth or anything like that. Uh, being turn-based, that means you dictate the pace of the game. You can quick buy uh, turns as fast as you can hit the button, or you can take your time and really analyze the situation, what's going on. Um, 
and really focus in on what you need to do and um, where your resources need to go and plan out strategies and all that without being rushed. Uh, the other good point is it's uh, the combat is actually real times, so you get a combination of both turn based and real time. Uh, the real time uh, combat is possible, so of course you can plan your attacks, uh, you can assign ships, uh, you know vectors, and and try to um, you know flank enemies, and uh, the combat is really really c complex. And I guess that's another reason I love Star Drive, and um, it is complex to the, it's simplistic to the point where it's complex, if that's kind of, uh, if that makes sense to you. What I mean by that, I guess, is that everything flows together. When you understand how uh, your different resources work and, and uh, how you manage your citizens on the planets, and you figure all that out, it's just everything flows together really nicely and it's easy to figure out from point A to point B um, how to, what you want to do and how to get there. Uh, you don't need to study real in-depth manuals to try and figure out everything, but there's still so much strategy into uh, just something as simple as the combat for the space uh, combat can be where, to the point where uh, you're going to set up uh, the distance your ships should get to. You want to be fighting at long range or medium range or short range. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, you can actually design your own ships. You can take um, different models of ships and make one model maybe a, a long range artillery ship. And you can make another one just a missile ship. You can make a whole bunch of close in, in tight fighters all kinds of different ships that you can create uh, very easily with the little um, mechanical system molecular system I don't know but, uh, so that's really nice as well um, it flows together the different races are interesting they each have their own kind of flavor to them their own kind of uh, um, you know their own kind of background and history and stuff uh, with this edition here Star Drive 2 you actually, if you uh, don't like the 4X strategy game and you don't like that, you just like the combat part of it, they actually incorporated a battle arena here now. So you can basically bypass uh, building and expanding and uh, colony management and all that. And if you just want to do all the fighting and just get into the combat of it, you can actually get into the battle arena here and they have different missions you can take on. Um, I, Like I said, I haven't done that yet. But uh, I plan on getting into that eventually uh, sometime, but I'm really excited about starting a brand new campaign. So um, if we look at the options menu really quick first, there isn't a lot there. Um, I've got the music turned way down, and I've got the FX volume turned quite a bit down. The rest of it is, you know, pretty standard stuff for the options, you know, not a lot of it. Um, and then you can just disable or enable the GNN, which is the global, um, the uh, Galactic News Network. Sorry, Galactic News Network is what that stands for. And basically, every once in a while, uh, while you're after you take your turn, they'll pop in and kind of give you like a little funny report of what's going on. It's uh, kind of interesting, so I leave that on because uh, I like it. But that's uh, pretty much it for the options. Uh, of course, you can load a game, you can quit. We talked about the battle arena, but the base of the game. Uh, is the campaign. If we look at the campaign here, you can see that there are nine different, very different, distinct races out there. Of course, you have the United Federation, which is basically your humans. You have the Cortezine Collective, which is kind of, um, uh, let's see, what's our best, best way to kind of describe these guys? Um, they're kind of, um, uh, kind of like the Borg, but made out of like uh, fleshy, fleshy tissue, I guess is the best way. And of course, you can see each of the different races have different bonuses. You have uh, nice uh, the polyps here, which are kind of a uh, plant um, race. You have the chook, which is kind of like insectoids. You have the samurai, kind of ancient warrior um, um, battle bears. You have the Aryleth, a technocrat, um, which are kind of like a squid-like people. You have these 
Uh, I wouldn't call them undead warrior type people, but they kind of remind me of undead, where they have these weird uh, kind of aura around them that they kind of hide their real true personalities. Uh, you have these guys, which are kind of like, um, if you remember the movie Matrix, and they have those little uh, uh, mechanical droids that go out and hunt out spaceships and stuff like that. It's kind of what these guys are like. And then, of course, you have the uh, vampire um, were-type creatures here. So, lots of really interesting things. Any one of these races you can customize to your heart's content. So, if you like, uh, maybe... Um, oh, I don't know. Who should we look at? Uh, we'll take the Palms, for example. Um, we have the defaults of the Palms, but we can go in and customize it. And basically, all you do is have a certain amount of points that you can use. And then you can just say, okay, well, we're going to take... Um, Reckless polluters and it's going to give us four extra points to spend on something else so we can say um, uh, Sacrificers and spiritual and we'll get these two bonuses which will give us four points which offset our reckless polluters um, I'm not going to go ahead and change Oops, I'm not going to go ahead and change the default there, so we'll just go ahead and leave it back on the default. But uh, let's say, for example, you didn't like the uh, being an inept at spying. You really like the spy, uh, check out what's going on with your enemies with spying. You can, of course, undo that uh, and uh, take something in uh, maybe quality engineers, which will give you 25% um, bonus to ship hit points. So you can really kind of uh, customize... Um, your race a little bit, not not, not fully, um, just just a little bit. So uh, let's see. Let's just start off. We'll be the United Federation. We'll be the good guys, the humans. So we're smart, which gives us plus one research for scientists. Uh, we are industrial, so it gives us plus one production. We have a twenty percent bonus to ship weapon damage. We have um, ground troops have an additional ten hit points. We have a 25% penalty on tax revenue, so we're kind of, um, we're corrupt, obviously, so we're losing some uh, money there. But we do have 25% um, bonus to ship hit points. So, again, if you wanted to go in and uh, customize these, we could, but we're not going to. We're just going to take the default and uh, get into things. Of course, you can uh, decide what your leader name is. You can uh, decide your empire color. Oh, um, you know, let's just stay with the boo, that's fine. You can decide how many um, opponents, let's say four. The difficulty, easy, normal, hard, brutal. And I know that uh, down here you can see our version number is 1.0D. And from what I understand, they had to patch the game after it came out uh, pretty quickly because people were complaining that on easy mode it was still too hard to play against. Uh, this is way too hard. So they toned it down and version D here. So we're just going to try normal. We're not going to try hard or brutal. Um, this is our first play. You can change your empire name. You can change the race. You can adjust the system count. How many systems are going to be out there? Uh, we'll leave it on 70. That sounds like a good number. Uh, system distribution. So you can decide if it's going to be clusters or spiral or random. We'll just leave it on random. And of course, you can decide how fertile places will be, how rich they will be, and how many hostile threats there will be. Uh, we're just going to leave it on classic, classic, and normal. We're just going to play a pretty normal-ish game there. You can decide what opponents you're actually going to be facing against. So um, you can decide. Well, I don't like to play these guys or against these guys because they're too aggressive, but I like playing against the bears and the um, the hive and the polyps and maybe the Volfar there and of course you can click on aggressive AI which means they will be super aggressive and of course you can have them um, change any of their default racial abilities if you wanted to as well so um, I'm not going to I'm just going to leave it I think on random um, if you don't have any of these checked I think it'll just randomly choose which guys are in the uh, galaxy with you um, so you can randomize personalities uh, that's really cool so you can take the personalities to be fully randomized so you can't just assume that the polyps will be the s default um, polyps that you know and love 
Um, and then you can tune on or turn off the tutorials. Since this is our first play, we'll leave the tutorials on. And we'll go ahead and begin. So the United Federation. Uh, you can go ahead and read that. I'm not going to read it to you guys here. We are way too interested in just getting things rolling here and trying this wonderful game out. Again, personally, myself, I would love to thank the uh, developers of this game. Thank you for all the time and effort they put into this game. Um, so excited to see that uh, Star Drive 2 has come out. So uh, we're going to go ahead and hit next. So here is... Welcome to Star Drive 2. The goal right. of Star Drive 2 is to build a space empire. As Emperor, it is your duty to explore the unknown reaches of the galaxy and to select which planets you wish to colonize or conquer. This tutorial will help you understand the tools at your disposal. Please note that some parts of the interface will be temporarily disabled to keep this tutorial on track. Okay, we're actually going to skip the tutorial. I did not realize it was going to be a like step-by-step -step type thing. We're just going to skip it, um, and I will be your kind of your tutorial. Again, I haven't really played this, but obviously this is our galaxy. You can zoom to the edge uh, of your mouse to see. We are kind of not in the middle, but I'd say the uh, 3 o'clock position, just south of the middle there. Um, you can see the blue area represents the area that we have, uh, we know about. Uh, we've got long range uh, telescopes on our home worlds. We can see out to about here, but we don't uh, see much past that. We don't know what's on this and this over here. We can see this star, but we don't know what it is. If I click on it, you can just see up here in the top right hand corner, it tells me it's an unexplored star system. Um, but it does kind of give you a little bit of a hint there. It says white stars burn heart, which means uh, they will likely be rich in minerals but hard for life to be sustained. So uh, we got a blue star over here, it looks like. Yep, blue stars are um, radiation emitted from these stars. Uh, likely to, very unlikely to support life um, and rich in minerals again. We have a nice yellow star over here. Obviously, yellow stars are good because they usually have some kind of life sustaining uh, atmosphere and uh, I usually have some minerals as well and uh, what do we have over here another yellow star but if we zoom back in you can see here is our current solar system I believe this is all randomized um, you don't get um, these every time uh, you can see that earth is our current um, Oops, let's see. Um, okay, I can just zoom that way. There we go. All right. So Earth is our uh, home world at this point, obviously. It's a medium Terran world. It's abundant. Uh, it has normal genes. And it has 8 of 12 maximum people on the planet. If we click on the planet, it'll just kind of zoom into the, the, the world there and kind of show you what's going on with your system here. Again, up here, it kind of gives some... Uh, basic information we can have a maximum of 12 people on this planet and each person represents like a I don't know a hundred million people or whatever it is it's not just one person obviously um, so you can see we're at 8 of 12 and if you count the little people down here you will see we have one two three four five six seven eight and each of these people depending on if they're farmers workers or scientists will earn us a certain amount of points uh, towards that uh, resource. So you can see our farmers here, we have four farmers. Uh, in fact, if we click on this, there's a kind of an overview. Our base uh, food per farmer is two. We have four of them, so four times two is eight. Uh, and then we have to feed all of our people uh, notice we have a total of eight people, so we have to feed everyone. If we had, say, seven food, we'd be starving, and uh, we might end up losing some population. Uh, so you can see that uh, you want to keep your food pretty much equal to um, what you need to have to keep everyone alive and healthy and growing. Uh, you can see here that our population growth meter shows you that in approximately 19 more turns 
will go from eight to nine people. Uh, and you can also move people around from planets to planets, which we'll look at later. Uh, down here in the bottom left hand corner is our ground forces. Our ground forces are basically there to protect our planet. We can also actually click on our ground forces and launch them into space and have them travel between planets uh, if we wanted to. And in fact, if we actually go into our ground forces here, um, let's see, oh, nope, that's not what I meant to do. Trying to, um, okay, we click on the upgrade button. There we go. So here's our ground forces here. Now, this is one of the new additions in Star Drive 2. Uh, your your uh, infantry uh, have different slots that you can actually put things in and you can see here we have a laser rifle, we have a med kit and right now we don't have anything listed for this but we can say you know what put a laser pistol in there alright um, of course you can take the laser pistol in and out and so you can kind of customize your infantry uh, based on what you want to do. If you want to have uh, this guy here has a laser rifle and also has a combat knife so he can be a frontline guy running up and stabbing people uh, in the face with this knife uh, and also shooting from the back. This guy here is obviously your medic. You keep him behind everybody and kind of can run up and um, cast a, a heal on uh, uh, some of your injured units. This guy here has a deployable shield. So a shield uh, will actually absorb damage if it's standing behind the shield. So it's kind of like a defensive barrier almost. So you got a couple of these guys. And of course we can get in and customize these all we want. So if I don't like the combat knife, I can get rid of that. I want to give this guy some heavy armor and uh, give him a shield as well. Of course they can have up to maximum number of three slots, I believe. Um, I believe that's correct. Uh, we'll have a medic here and give him some heavy armor as well. This guy here, we'll give him the charge ability. When activated, this unit will make a free melee attack the next time it becomes engaged. So obviously, we probably want to have um, a combat knife and the charge ability on this guy. There we go. And um, we got one guy with the shield, we'll put another guy with the shield and another heavy armor. So these two guys, and then we got a medic behind him, and there we go. And so you can get in and customize each one of your individual infantry units. And you think, oh, okay, that's cool, that's pretty neat, and it is. But you will actually have close combat um, in uh, different missions and stuff that you're going to go on. If you land on asteroids and different moons and different star bases and stuff like that, you actually switch screens and go into a little turn-by-turn -turn, uh, combat th uh, simulation there, which is really, really cool. Alright, uh, over here on the right-hand side basically shows your planet, uh, shows you what structures, what buildings have been built. we got an infantry base here, we have a star base here, um, and right now we currently have no construction, so of course we're going to click on that and it shows you everything over here on the right hand side that we can currently build and over here on the left hand side will be all of our structures so these are these are um, uh, non-combat vessels these are combat vessels and of course a spy down here at the bottom and uh, so we can either make another colony ship which would be pretty good we can make another frigate fleet which would be good we can make a construction ship allows you to build various types of despace stations oh that's going to be awesome uh, we can also try to get some more goods here allows you to convert production to bc at a rate of 10 production per billion credits so i think bc is a billion credits Uh, that's for each foreign trade route we have. Okay, and then this is plus one level to all the ships you build here. So uh, your ships will actually level up as you use them. They'll gain some experience points. So obviously having the fleet academy is good. First thing I think we're going to do is uh, create a freighter fleet because this is uh, these are guys are very important. The freighter fleet is basically you know it's kind of like the supply lines when you're playing any kind of war game. Uh, you know, you got to get the supplies up to your units to be able to fight. And as you can see here, um, fighters only appear on the strategic map when in use. 
They are used to transport colonists and food between your planets. They also act as truce transports when you launch troops into space. So if we want to move our troops around, which we will, or if we want to move colonists or food between our planets. So we're going to build a uh, frigate fleet, and then right after that we're going to build a uh, colony ship. Um, and try and get another colony established. But uh, usually you want to have some frigate fleets taking food back and forth between your uh, new planet to get it up and running as quickly as possible. So uh, that's just... just you know, uh, it just depends on the situation. So we've got uh, our uh, current research, I'm sorry, not research, our current build up here in the top right-hand corner. The layout of our planet here in the middle on the right-hand side. Up at the top is the information about, uh, and you can actually rename this. Oh, that's good. I did not know that. You can actually rename this. Click up here. It looks like we can rename this if we wanted to, but Earth obviously is good. And um, then we could see down here in the bottom right hand corner is our mini map of the galaxy. Again, we're kind of in this position right here. And now we get to choose a research. So research is kind of broken off into uh, several different categories. Uh, one, two, three, four. There are six different categories. Off-world industry, off-world agriculture. Uh, there's prismatic applications, research philosophy, particle physical, and experimental. So if you click on experimental, uh, it's going to unlock a random technology. Now, if you're familiar with Masters of Orion, it's been a long time since I played this. Uh, from what I remember, uh, if you click on one of these, uh, you basically are choosing between one or the other. Uh, you will kind of have to choose between this research and that one and, and plus one food per farmer in worlds where base food per farmer so that's obviously good and this provides plus three food per turn to the colony so this is just giving us three random food from uh, from for anywhere in our, our colony that might need it or of course one food per farmer on worlds where base food per farmer is greater than zero. Okay, I think soil enrichment is what we're going to do. And you see it kind of grays out the other option there. And up here it's going to tell us it has 14 turns left to do. So that's great and that's wonderful. Oh, that's just, uh, let's look at the detail, the graphics on this. It's just really, really amazingly good. Um, <coughs> All right, so uh, up here in the top right-hand corner, you can see our command points. Command points in this game are very important. That basically uh, tells you how big a military fleet you can have. Um, you can see here we have a total of seven command points. We start with five command points, and then we get two per star base we own. We currently have one star base, so it gives us a total of seven. You could build higher than seven, but you take a penalty... Um, you take a severe penalty. Well, you don't get a pen. Um, that's the best way to explain it. You basically don't get as as good a bang a buck for your. Um, it costs you more to have basically more than seven at this point. So um, we'll have to look at that when we get to it. Here's your freighters. What they're doing. Uh, obviously, we got no freighters, so we want to get that. This is our food super surplus or shortage in our shortage in our empire. Um, obviously you want to try and keep that in the um, as close to zero or positive as you can you don't want to really go negative uh, and this of course uh, dic the uh, situation dictates that our research we're earning six research points per turn and our total income right now is 50 um, billion credits you can see we are grossing three and are costing us three in colony maintenance we have zero fleet maintenance right now. We have zero trades, and um, that's pretty much that. All right, so that's kind of just an overview of our uh, situation in the world. Now, top left-hand corner, we have uh, options menu. We're just going to go ahead and resume. We have our science. If you want to look at your science again, we have our empire management, which will list all your planets. Um, and this is kind of a good way to kind of, you know, oh, okay, well, um, 
Oh, and this is something I didn't explain. We'll have to go back and look at this real quickly. Uh, you can move guys around on this. It shows you what you're building, uh, what your tax rate is currently. We're going to go ahead and increase our tax rate because I want to get a little bit of positive money coming in. Even though it's only plus one, uh, that should be good. You can see how many leaders you currently have. We have zero. Uh, and, of course, the planets we know about, which, of course, you can, I believe, yes, you can... Um, you can uh, uh, arrange them by size, materials, gravity, and climate. So obviously if you're looking for a large planet, you can sort them by size. You can see that Sol 1 here is a large planet. Um, it has a maximum population of 5. We also have Sol 3 here. Um, and we can see that this minerals, this one is poor, this one is abundant. This one is also abundant and is medium. This is not a bad little planet, but it is barren, so we're going to get no food whatsoever on it. So we got a decision to make. Uh, but before we do that, let's go back and look at our farmer or our uh, people. So we have a total of eight people on the planet. We can arrange these people however we want. We can take two more, make them farmers, and we will be building nothing. You can see we're gaining zero uh, extra uh, hammers or a building materials so we will never build anything at this rate uh, so obviously that would be good and we're actually ending up with extra food there and you can see why we get two for two food per person we have six people six times two is twelve we only need to consume eight because we own eight people and you can see we have a net food production of four. Now this might be okay if we have another planet in our system that is losing, uh, doesn't have any ability to make um, uh, food. So it might be a good option to actually, you know, move extra guys up here to uh, kind of keep that other planet surviving. So uh, we can, you know, if we wanted to focus more on research, we can bring down more research guys. You can see our soil enrichment went down to nine turns. And obviously, if we want to build something a little faster, we can bring these guys up. You can see our soil enrichment went up to 27 turns. But now it's only going to take us seven turns to build our freighter. Uh, if we bring this guy back down, it's going to take us nine turns. So basically, um, you can move your guys around however you think. Uh, the situation best uh, can be remedied. We can put all our guys up there and get no improvements in our science whatsoever. But of course, you know, we'll build our frigate uh, transports really quickly that way. Um, so actually, you know what I might want to do here is um, click on this again. I might want to actually move the colony ship up first. Let's bring the colony ship up first. So you can just click and drag and re redesign. You can click on the button here to get rid of it. And you can click on this, box, this button to actually buy it uh, right off the bat. Uh, so that is also an, an option. This is our diplomacy screen. Obviously, we only know of us. We don't know of any of the others right now. Um, and last but not least, we have the fleet management. So you can decide uh, how your fleets are arranged. Uh, if you want to retrofit your ships, you want to scrap them, you want to get rid of them. Um, you can see you can click on the ship and it'll kind of talk about it. You can actually um, look at the aggressor Mark One. And we can, whoa, that's probably a bad option. I did not probably. Um, okay, probably did not. I meant to show you that, not actually do that so that might be a, a bad thing for us but we will see all right so here is the other systems around us so uh, if we click back on oops um, let's go ahead and exit out of that uh, you can see here is our ship is a human fleet it's oh it's actually a colony ship okay cool so we can send this right over to one of our other systems so this is kind of a nice view First of all, it's very eye-pleasing. It's very, um, you know, really makes you feel uh, really good about watching what's going on. And really interesting. Uh, but it's mo most importantly, as I mentioned in my intro, kind of talking about what's so great about this game, is you can see all of the important information 
is right here on the screen. I don't need to go digging for it. I don't need to try and find out what, you know, Soul 3, what, what does it do? What does it have? It tells you right here. It's a large and it's radiated planet, but it has um, abundant resources, normal G's, maximum of five people. You can see this one here. Actually, you can see it's uh, in the green there. Ancient Mines. This planet is a series of well-developed mines scattered across the surface. Though obviously ancient, the mining equipment is perfectly serviceable. So I think we, if we colonize this planet, it would give us, uh, let's just back out of that. Um, actually, let's go back to our view here. There's what I'm looking for. So you can see, um, we would get no food here, but look at the seven production per worker. So we can only have a maximum of three workers there, but all three of them would make 21 um, hammers because it's so rich in materials. But of course, we'd have to supply food to these three workers from one of our other planets. So it's probably um, one food per farmer. That's not too bad. Uh, it's not great, but it's not too bad. It does have artifacts on it. So, um, Artifacts, exploration bonus, control four mine, we're gonna gain plus two billion credits per turn per trade frigate visiting other empires. So because we have these ancient artifacts, if we establish some trade routes to other uh, civilizations, people want to come visit, so we're gonna earn some extra money from that. Uh, most importantly, it does have some nice, uh, I wouldn't say great amount of food, obviously one food per farmer is not great, uh, but it is for production per worker, so our workers could survive on this Soul 5. So I think what we're going to do is send our little guy here and, um, oops, click on it and right click over here and let him come over there. It says ETA 2, which means estimated time to arrive, two turns. And again, this is a turn-based game, so you can do all this stuff in the beginning set up your strategy and then you know uh, as the game uh, progresses along um, you know you can speed it up and so come down here we're gonna hit the next turn so I know that took a long time but I'm just trying to explain some stuff out there to you guys that are kind of newer to uh, Star Drive system especially Star Drive 2 so uh, let's go back to this um, it's going to take us 41 turns to uh, build that. So what we will actually want to do... Um, I, did, I did not mean to do this, first of all. So let's just uh, cancel that. And we're going to go ahead and bring our frigate fleet back up to the top there. There we go. Alright. So I feel a little bit better about things. Alright! So now it's going to ask us, do we want to colonize Soul 5? It's a medium desert planet. It's abundant resources with normal G, normal gravity. Um, if you get high gravity and low gravity, I forget exactly what it does, but it you know makes it not as good to live on. Well, it's a, kind of a small. It's only going to give us three maximum population. Um, but, you know, it's going to give us some extra money, income, and it's kind of the best... Uh, the best bang for our buck right now. We do have a maintenance penalty plus 25%, which is because of the something. Um, of course, we can confirm or we can abort this, but let's go ahead and confirm it. Let's get our second, get our second planet started right away. So um, we're going to go ahead and leave one of our farmers on the food there and so that way the plant is not going to do anything just yet but what we're going to do is we're actually going to come over to here to earth and we're going to say you know what little uh no actually what we want to do is come here to our empire what we want to do is okay um we're going to get what's our production here on production is six hammers okay so our production here is three hammers per worker here it's four hammers 
uh, per worker. So sending a worker from here, oh, no, just one, thank you. Sending a worker from here to this system, you, uh, you are unable to remove the desired amount of citizens from your county earth unit because you don't have enough fringer. Okay, so that's why we want to get the frigates. Okay. So we definitely need to get the frigates. Uh, we have no extra frigates ready to go, which is what we use to get our guys moving around. So that's why I wanted to move that up. All right. Uh, so we've colonized. Right now it's not doing anything other than, well, um, you know, it's slowly but surely gaining enough people that um, we can get another person. What we really want to do is really get this um, extra production from this world get uh, get it up and running as soon as we can so we're just taking another turn we're basically going to go through the turns pretty fast now because we oh wait a minute we actually are wasting something here so we do have a little uh, fleet here so um, something to keep in mind we need to send these guys out and explore so click on them and um, right click on our destination over there there we go We'll send them over there. So it's going to take us three turns. As long as you're within your boundaries, you pretty much don't have to worry about fuel. But once you start leaving uh, down here, you will notice your fuel uh, for your ships. And uh, obviously, if you run out of fuel, they can basically come back, but they can't use like their FTL drive. So coming from like this star back into our system might take like 10 turns. Uh, it might only take us like two turns or three turns to get over there, but it's going to take us ten turns to get back because we can't use, we're not using our, you know, our faster drives because we just run out of fuel. So you want to make sure uh, not to send your guys halfway across the galaxy if you don't need to. So we are going to send these guys. Now I can click on our guys. I can send them anywhere, which is really nice. You can see I can just send them over there if I wanted to. Um, so there's no restriction on, oh, you have to click on the planet to go to the planet um, or whatever. So that's awesome. All right, so right now uh, we wasted a couple turns not sending that guy out. Hopefully that will hurt us in the long run. But here we got the Galactic News Network coming online. Here we go. So they are broadcasting from a highly secure location. Today's reports are filtering in that five new races have taken to the stars making the start of a new cycle. Will these flooding races repeat the mistakes of those who came before them, or will one champion emerge to claim a victory? Over the coming weeks, we'll be taking a closer look at each of these races and see how they're coming along, now that those star drives working for them. We'll be back with more as we have it. Until then, this has been the Galactic News Network. That's nice. Just a nice little break. So let's take a look at our new little system here um, one thing I would like uh, obviously this is um, you know a one-man team a smaller development company I guess is the best way to describe it uh, right now I'm trying to use the arrow keys to move up and down but it kind of uses the default W A S and D which is great for all those right-handed players out there but us left-handed people use the mouse uh, in our left hand and our right hand just naturally goes over to the right side of the keyboard so having an option there to actually um, be able to uh, use other keys would be nice well anyways um, we can see here let's click on this we'll start sending them over this way so we've come across a new solar system here this is the Isira, Assyria system. You see, we got a medium, Terran, poor, normal G. Ooh, it's 12 people though, but it's storm racked. Um, exploration bonus control four or more, you're going to gain a 10% approval. So for the source of Baca controlled, gain plus two. Oh, okay, that's for the Baca route. Uh, so you have two. Strategic resources, is that what that was? A storm wreck, there we go. Every few turns, this planet is wracked by incredibly violent storms. Production and farming are impossible during the storms, so plus 50% to normal building maintenance here. Gain a special project to study and control this planet, uh, which would be kind of cool. You can actually um, colonize uh, uh, 
um, asteroid belts like this here, the Asaria belt. You see though it's very tiny, uh, it does have abundant resources but it's low G. And of course we have Asteria 2 which is another tiny abundant low G. Uh, it does have Ambrosia uh, which is crops that ripen on this planet are imbued with special properties that greatly increase the fertility of whoever eats them. Doubles the base population growth on the planet. So it would grow really fast. Uh, it does have abundant resources, but it does have low G. I'm trying to remember exactly what the low G does, but I don't recall right off, mm, off the bat. So I'll have to look at that for you guys and see if I can figure that out. Uh, this is a wormhole here, though. So obviously, uh, being in our system, we might want to colonize this just so we have a presence here. So in case other ships, wherever this wormhole goes, uh, if other ships come through here, we'll have a defensible, maybe a defensible location there. Uh, scouts have arrived. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and spend maybe one. Oh, looks like we have a question mark out here. We have an unexplored anomaly. So do we, I think we check out the anomaly before we actually go through the wormhole. You see our little line here? We can actually just bypass that anomaly, uh, our wormhole, and go up to the anomaly. It's only going to take us one more turn, so let's see what it is before we bring this episode to a close. We have a mysterious asteroid floating alone in the deep space. A mysterious ap asteroid appears. Um, so there's just several options. We can tow it back to town, and we can study it, use our science points towards trying to find out what's going on with it. We can dispatch scientists there, which is going to cost us 100 billion credit. Uh, and then it'll gain a special project. Uh, we don't have time for this mystery and can't afford to let our enemies unlock whatever science secrets are here. We can just blow it out of space or we can just leave it alone. Let's just go ahead and leave it alone for now and we'll come back to it um, when we get some, a little bit more money and we'll have him jump through the wormhole before we end up going anywhere. Oh! Good things! I am Indica of the Paul of Symbius. Isn't it a great thing to make some new friends? So we can do, it just instantly declare war. We can discuss things with them. However, we can exit. Let's discuss. So basically, um, this is kind of our side of the map, or our treaties. This is their side. This is kind of our offer to them. This is their offer. We can say, you know what? Um, we expect you to give us, you know, non-aggressive pact, and um, you'll see with. Yeah, sure, right? A business? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, 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 work for both of us. So you can kind of tell whether or not they're going to accept it or not. And right now, right now, we don't want to be aggressive with anybody, so let's try and make some friends. And uh, if we have this non-aggressive uh, pact, it's going to sway them a little bit more into our favor. Uh, there's also a tolerance down here. Uh, so this is their uh, tolerance for making deals with other races. Uh, each enemy and to your side of the trade uh, adds to your tolerance so you can see here their tolerance is a uh, 40 of 50 so that's pretty good we'll just go ahead and confirm the deal we'll be non-aggressive with them rays of light good doing a trade with you I did just uh, so you can see they're kind of cool that they talk with musical notes as well so that's just a cool little thing see he's trying to communicate with us by playing different notes on his instrument there that's awesome so let's see where we ended up going. We went, oh, let's see, where did we go? We're going to have to zoom way up here. Oh, there is the other end of the wormhole here, which came out in the Hydra system. Uh, it's a small radiated pore, low G, and an asteroid belt, so nothing very good here. So if we click on our ship, so um, going through a wormhole, I believe, doesn't cost any fuel, so um, we could maybe go uh, well we don't have really anything there to check out we could zoom over here but probably just have to come back through the wormhole uh, rather spend some time oh, I gotta use this stupid WASD uh, kind of figuring out what's going on our side of the galaxy but now that we've met them at least we can um, we can communicate with them and uh, form maybe a trade treaty and stuff so go through, come on, turn, bloop, there we go, and I think it takes you a whole turn to go through, there we go. 
Alright, and last but not least, we're going to send him, um, let's send him over to this other yellow star over there. There's the yellow star down here. The white and the blue stars are, like I said, probably resources, um, uh, very good for resources, but not good for growing your empire with people. Uh, in fact, if we look at our empire, you can see here, um, I wonder if we do this. So if we take, um, one of our population there and we take our population like this that still should give us enough food for our thing but we'll get some population here which means we can actually build some stuff um, and we could build a star base which of course would give us some more command points which will let us build a big bigger military or we can do some trade goods, the Fleet Academy, and the Infantry Base. Um, right now this would be kind of good because we've got nothing really protecting this planet at this point. <laughs> we can build up a military a little bit, uh, but probably not probably have to get our economy going and our industry and our research all that good stuff first pen production per billion credits producing trade goods allows you to convert production into billion credits at a rate of 10 production per billion credits However, this rate is improved by one production per billion credit for each foreign trade routes you have. If you have a small trade treaty, two trade routes, with a single other empire, then the trade rate will be eight production per billion credit. Trade goods will be built indefinitely so long as the item is at the top of the build queue. Well, um, I think we're going to go ahead and do the Fleet Academy. It's going to take Quite a while, I believe. Uh, 50 turns. And this is... Uh, wow. Oh, that's our colony ship. So our... Our, uh, our little guys... Uh, let's exit out of this for a second. So now you can see we're using one of our two freighters. Our freighters are hauling food between Earth and Sol 5. So it's making it grow a little bit faster. I believe uh, that will kick in pretty good. So we're getting plus three production there. We're actually getting um, eight production from here. We're not getting any science at this point, but if we take this off, then we end up losing a food, which we don't want to do, which is always going to be a bad thing. So we'll just, um, and of course, the more hammers you have, the more pollution you're going to make from your industry. So you lose, uh, right now we're losing one of our hammers because of pollution. If you look at that, there we go. Uh, wasted from pollution, minus one. Tax adjustment uh, is minus one as well. So instead of eight, we're getting six, which means if we look at our tax rate, if we take our taxes back to zero, let's see what that does to our. Yeah, we're up to seven now. So we're getting a little bit better production because our people aren't spending as much money. Uh, so, yeah, that's a little better. Okay, so still, we can buy it for 900, which we currently don't have. 35 more turns for another colony ship, but I think that's a good good option. All right, folks, well, hopefully you enjoyed the look at uh, Star Drive 2 here. We come back for the next episode. We're going to try and find out what's over on this end of the galaxy and uh, maybe search around for a little bit, see what we can find. And then... Um, Hopefully make some friends with the polyps and find out where the bad, ugly people are in the galaxy and uh, destroy them eventually. So, of course, all uh, good 4X strategy games. It takes a little while to get things... Oh, we actually... 
We actually know what's on this planet here. I don't, I'm not sure how we know that. Is it because, you know, I don't know why we know this. But let's take a look at it before we leave here uh, to see if there's anything. It's huge. It's abundant. Uh, Heavy G gives us a 25% gravity penalty. Uh, but we could put six people on it, and it's got Noxium 2. So if we control four or more... Uh, Noxium is a volume for each source of Noxium possessed, you gain plus 10% ship speed in tactical combat. Mmm, really? Expiration bonus, if we control four or more, we're going to gain an extra 20% to missile damage by using Noxium as a re reactant. So it might be very much useful to come out and get the hold of this planet. Uh, it's only a size 6, which is not really that big, even though it says huge. Uh, it's tundra. It's abundant resources. Let's, um, before we say goodbye here, let's quickly look at this here. Yeah, if we look at our size here... Two for two, uh, two food per farmer, which is good. Normal gravity. Oh, this is not the one I was looking at. Uh, this one here. Um, so it's abundant three three food per worker. One or one food per uh, or farmer. Three production per worker. Uh, it's minus twenty five percent production though. That is that's a bummer. Uh, size is not too bad, but this one here, this might be, this might be the system right here. So you get two food per farmer. So obviously that would be, I mean, we would have to put less people on farming. Oh, there's, that's a nice, oh, this, oh, Ezra too is nice. Plus it doubles, um, the base population grows. Ooh, Isaria 2 is good, and Isaria 3. We definitely need to get in that system, which I believe is this... Oops, uh, it's this one. I, <clears throat> yeah, this is... This is not bad right there. Three food per farmer, four production per worker, and three research per scientist. No gravity penalty and no maintenance penalty. This one here would be 233 three with a 50% penalty. But it has Bas Basca Root, which again gives us plus 0.2 population growth on each of your planets. Wow! For each source. So actually, we would get plus 4% population growth. Oof! This game is just getting better and better with all these different resources and trying to figure things out. Wow, that's great. I love it. Well, thanks anyways. Uh, sorry this ran a little bit long. We'll try and keep our other episodes a little bit uh, easier for you guys. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. So thanks so much for watching.